you have been given histology of a patient who is having thyroiditis. First, let us review the image based questions. <clears throat> what is true regarding about this uh, histology? Classically, it is an example of granulomatous thyroiditis, which is uh, also called D. Quervain's thyroiditis, is what you need to remember. And uh, whenever granuloma formation is there, steroids are the part of the treatment is what you need to fundamentally appreciate. You have the histopathology of the liver in a middle-aged woman who is presenting with an intense pruritus and her anti-mitochondrial antibodies are positive. So, what is a very important entity this histology shows? Primary biliary cirrhosis, it is common among the females is what you need to basically remember and uh, it is a chronic non-suppurative, destructive cholangitis. Cholangitis means inflammation of bile duct. Cholecystitis is inflammation of gallbladder. Apologize if I am telling two basic things. But we used to always have confusion as students. What is cholangitis? What is cholecystitis? Cholangitis means bile duct inflammation. Cholecystitis is gallbladder inflammation <coughs> is what you need to be very sure. So very happy to see Ramya, Robin, Deep and many more online. You are sure, eh? Sikhinabha class started. <coughs> now a female patient without the history of smoking, without the history of smoking, Sudden onset of dyspnea has presented to you and the radiograph has shown the presence of a plural line. That means there is a air in the plural cavity. Pneumothorax. So we are talking about a spontaneous pneumothorax. So it is more common not in the older woman, but it is more painful if it is milder than in the severe. Severe means you will have dyspnea. Where is the pain? Mild means there will be pain. Lot of times uh, as a uh, radiologist, you will do transbronchial biopsy, CT guided. After that small pneumothorax will develop for the people. Don't run away from patient. Give some oxygen, sit on the side of the patient, reassure nothing will happen. Really also nothing will happen. But uh, if you panic being a radiologist, Ayyo, I have created a pneumothorax and all. When you have done a trans <coughs> bronchial biopsy, CT guided, a small amount of pneumothorax is not uncommon. Okay? So, that's the point. Now, you have been shown the histology. Looking at the histopathological appearance, uh, what do you like to call this as? Also, you have been given ERCP and MRCP imaging where you have beaded appearance of the biliary tree. So, primary sclerosing cholangitis is your uh, diagnosis in this uh, given case. So, it can even involve gallbladder. It is very commonly seen as an extra intestinal manifestation of inflammatory bubble disease like ulcerative colitis. And uh, there will be repeated dilatation and strictures is a typical appearance which you will have. <coughs> there is no increased risk of developing any bile duct stones in primary sclerosing. Cholangitis is what need to be remembered. A 57 year old diabetic with a 6 week history of pyrexia of unknown origin, he had a CT abdomen, CT abdomen. What is uh, the possibility in this given case? See doctor, very easy to interpret CT. If you know what is there in abdomen, you will know what is there in CT. You have a liver on the right side. Then on the left, then you have these two kidneys. 
then you have these two kidneys you see the other kidney there is a, a cystic lesion in that kidney whereas this kidney this kidney is normal but this kidney has got a cortical area one big lesion which is in a contrast enhancing border is there for it which is feature of abscess so what she is having is basically a renal abscess is what uh, you need to basically conclude huh? uh, it all depends on the uh, CT attenuation values typically if it is a bleed then it won't be low attenuating lesion it will be a <coughs> high attenuating lesion which is the difference between the two is what you need to remember <coughs> now a 48 year old man traumatic fracture of the left femoral shaft developed disorientation and there are petechiae on his arm and the front of the chest and also there are lesions in the brain classical of fat embolism so we are trying to ask what is the wrong statement about it <coughs> even in fat embolism we give heparin heparin is not contraindicated then since fat is embolism is fat Easily, what will what you will give? Five percent dextrose with five percent alcohol injection. The combination is what you will basically give in case of uh, fat embolism. Then, doctor, there is a complication in a tibial fracture in the radiograph shown to you. Actually, there is a non-union with a pseudo arthrosis which has been formed on this radiograph I don't know how clear it is in the printout it is not clear in the printout see from next week onwards what we will do those who are taking paper based exam we will raise all these images on a blog on a html page you will get the smartphones no so we will give you the url of that you all have 3g on your uh, phone just go to that uh, url then you have all images question number image so that for clarity you can see it into your phone to print it color prints is very costly affair and anyway it is use and throw after the test is over and remember always the image based questions you will predominantly answer by history only history is the thumb patient also tomorrow how will you make diagnosis kahani sunke aapko ek intuition aana chahiye you should get intuition ah this is a case of uh, hepatic vein thrombosis this is a case of the retroperitoneal lymphadenitis with lymphoma history only you must get that intuition pura unka pet cheer ke kaat ke kya hai kya hai kya hai dekhne ke baad agar aapko ek lymph node mil gaya to kya fayda patient patient mar gaya so that is the reason if you are seeing cases regularly after seeing about 15 to 20 cases of liver abscess, 15 to 20 cases of the pulmonary cox. You will automatically get a sort of a intuitional skill. That is the reason now as house surgeons and final years we take lot of history and do lot of physical examination. But our chief, while the fellow is walking only, he will look top to bottom and know that what is the story. How many wives he is having, how many of them are beating him and how many bruises he has got everything uh, physical assessment uh, everything uh, a senior professor can make because if you are a good medical doctor you need to get that intuition possibly this could be the cause based on the history itself ok even image based questions also the same story so what are all the fractures classically known to lead to development of non-union lower third of tibia olecranon medial malleolus etc supracondylar fracture mein kya hota mal union hota gun stock deformity will develop with cubitus varus is what you need to basically remember 
Then there is a bone tumor. <coughs> it is involving the shaft. Only two tumors involve shaft in the bone. Benign tumors may osteoid osteoma, <coughs> malignant tumors may Ewing sarcoma. They are only diaphyseal. Okay. Then there is also a central sclerotic nidus. There is a pain, nocturnal, relieved with salicylates. All this must make you to think of only one tumor that is osteoid. Osteoma is what you have to basically remember. And uh, uh, is it accept question? Huh? Uh, then the correct answer should be B, not D. I was, uh, while framing question, no, sometimes we will be thinking something and uh, suppose we restructured option B, uh, in forgetfulness we will put D. Correct answer is actually B, diaphysis. Eh? One small correction in the key. Now, there is a bone tumor typically involving the epiphysis and uh, metaphyseal area and there is a lifting of the overlying periosteum called Codman's triangle. It is a bone forming tumor, osteogenic sarcoma and uh, the most common location uh, is uh, not epiphysis. <coughs> yeah, it is not epiphysis, it is metaphysis and radiation therapy is not used in case of osteogenic sarcoma, not much useful. And uh, there is a cloudlet appearance on plain x-ray and peak incidence is between 10 to 25. If osteogenic sarcoma occur after 40, commonly it is due to? It is secondary to what underlying condition? If it occur after 40. Paget's disease, osteogenic sarcoma bandana. So whenever it arises from Paget's disease, then it will be after 40 is what need to be remembered. Very good. Raja Lakshmi is absolutely giving scud missile like answers, Paget's disease. Eh? See, by the time it is August, you should not take, August is okay, September is also okay, but October, a 200 marks paper, if it is given for 3 hours, you must solve it in 2 hours and come out. How much time you are taking to solve the question paper also is a sign of your preparedness. Is PG entrance mathematics exam? Malum hai ya nai malum? Kubul hai ya na kubul? Na kubul. Khatam. Vaap ham kubul karne ko soch rahe, dek rahe, khayal mein hai. O sab ab shayari bolte baiht gaye do. Iska matlab, you are not the right guy to marry. So, how fast reflexly you will answer? Because if you know 10, 10 points what examiner want in uh, every topic, automatically you will answer very fast because you need to only choose. So, that is the reason always think uh, how much score you got is okay, fine. But uh, how fast you are able to answer also is an index of... Uh, how thorough is your preparation? Let me tell you. Same paper if you are taking 4 hours to answer or very painfully answering or thinking a lot about each question and answering means you are not uh, up or down up you have to rise and uh, run. <coughs> My job is to make you to rise and run. <coughs> now, the lesion in the bone <coughs> There is a oval lytic lesion in the epiphyseal area. This is called as chicken wire pattern of uh, calcification. So, where do we see chicken wire calcification in a lytic lesion which is epiphyseal in location? Excellent. Chondroblastoma is what you need to basically remember. Chondroblastoma. A transverse sonogram of a 20 week old fetus, it looks like a lemon, 
इट्स कॉल्ड लेमन साइन अल्ट्रासाउंड करे तो तो बनाना साइन लेमन साइन आर टू क्लासिकल रेडियोलॉजिकल फीचर्स ऑफ न्यूरल ट्यूब डिफेक्ट्स फेवरेट क्वेश्चन ऑफ जिपमर एंड डीएनबी एंड स्टेट पीजी क्वेश्चन बैंक लेमन साइन बनाना साइन इन न्यूरल ट्यूब डिफेक्ट ओके वेन इज द नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ डीएनबी एग्जाम डिसंबर है डिसंबर फर्स्ट वीक नवंबर यू विल हैव एम्स ब्ला 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 एवरीथिंग अक्टूबर Second week we will have a five-day session, morning nine to six, and we will revise last ten years, ten into two twenty papers of DNB live class. Okay, so in uh, five days we will revise. Sixty percent questions come from the same lot. Why we ourselves cannot sit and uh, read it every time? We will think. Let us do last ten years papers of DNB, DNB, DNB. Oh, postponement syndrome is going on. That's why we want to format your uh, uh, brain. Uh, we have got excellent teachers. They will take twenty papers, ten years, five days, morning nine to six. Part, 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 part. We will finish October first week or second week. We will plan. Huh? But. Uh, By the time, if your basics, all topics, if you happen to revise and be ready, such crash courses help you. Otherwise, they won't. It will be a overburdening of a feeble brain, huh? which is not yet ready for lot of things. So, doctor, Benigno Milosil is what you need to basically remember the lemon sign. A 25 year old, superficial lesion on the tongue. Oh, it is not at all visible on this uh, poor. Uh, actually it is visible on the console uh, next time we'll get a better lcd projector huh? actually it is a lichen planus lesion if it is hard on the tongue it would have been uh, tongue carcinoma but uh, it is soft generally lichen planus occur along the buccal because of the cheek but uh, it can also occur on the tongue that is a point uh, which you need to remember right ramya is saying please broadcast it online also we will do anything uh, broadcast it to online also why not so like in plainness like in plainness uh, typically you have got that uh, soft ulcerations is what need to be remembered now you are having a branchial cyst on the neck so what is a true statement about it about uh, the branchial cyst it usually presents in adults it develops from the remnants of the second branchial cleft and it should be excised in the quiescent stage not acute stage and uh, it typically tracks through the fork of the common carotid will bifurcate no through that fork it will come out the lesion and uh, the 11th and 12th nerves because of the proximity to the carotid that the risk if you are operating on a branchial cyst is what need to be remember mr angiography has been done and uh, the lesion is being shown to you what is this called as potato tumor chemodectoma carotid body tumor they are all the synonyms can you do biopsy on such a vascular lesion you can't if you put a needle it, the blood will pump and hit the top of the operation theater roof one uh, carotid body tumor surgery if you see you will never forget you will get the inspiration to become a vascular surgeon eh? so what is true about this uh, even mr reconstruction image also is showing the carotid body tumor so it contains the chemo receptors that are hormonally inactive basically and it won't metastasize early and uh, you can't do an fnac on a vascular lesion like carotid body tumor then 34 year old what kind of female 34 you call young or old it depends on some people are young at heart even at 55 60 also 
We used to have a very romantic obstetrics uh, professor. Oh, she used to be a top surgeon. At the same time, uh, we all used to love to attend the class. Uh, so, we used to have geriatric postgraduate uh, obstetrics uh, PGs. So, they are only 23-24, no energy at all kind of uh, postgraduates. So, difficult to define who is young, who is old. Eh? But it doesn't matter. Now, doctor, whenever there is a pyrotoxic, I mean toxic diffuse goiter, grapes, young differs, young and old, how do you treat differ? So, typically what is the story in young patients who have a small diffuse toxic goiters, small, you can give antithyroid or radio iodine. If young, large diffuse goiter, surgery is better. And in old and diffuse toxic goiter, radio iodine is the treatment of choice. So, Graves disease management ke upar ek charcha hota hai daily and love mein. <coughs> treatment mein. Every entrance you go, they will definitely ask one question on that. So, you should thoroughly read uh, the discussion on that. A child is presenting with respiratory distress and what is this abdomen called scaphoid abdomen? Intestines are supposed to stay in this abdomen so that abdomen is supposed to have little bloating. If the intestines are moved into thorax through a diaphragmatic hernia, abdomen becomes scaphoid. And his radiograph is showing the intestines migrated into thorax. So, it is a a hernia through the foramen of Bordelac, which is due to the patency of the pleuroperitoneal canal is what you need to basically remember. Now you have a uh, left supraclavicular lymphadenopathy, Troisier sign, Trogios sign means what? It is the presence of Thrombophlebitis. Generally, thrombophlebitis of the varicose veins in the lower limb is not uncommon. Agar kisi ko upper limb ka veins are swollen and thrombosed, thrombophlebitis is there. You should suspect some sort of an internal malignancy. Generally, upper limb, why veins become varicose and uh, inflamed, they won't. Because upper limbs are not in a dependent position. If you want, you can raise the upper limb. You won't raise your leg that frequently, no. Huh. So, varicose veins, thrombophlebitis is common in lower limbs, not upper limbs. If somebody has upper limb, varicose, varicosities of the veins and uh, they are inflamed, think of a possibility of any compression of the SVC or uh, uh, presence of any internal malignancy, mediastinal tumor, etc., etc. <coughs> now, you have been shown an apparatus to control variceal bleeding. What is the only tube that you know which controls variceal bleeding? Black more send taken tube. Okay. Uh, it has one gastric balloon, esophageal balloon, and it will have a tamponading effect on the variceal bleeding. It is very easy, just like passing rice tube. Yeah, as a house surgeon, you should take chance to pass one sense taken tube in a alcoholic cirrhotic patient with esophageal variceal bleeding and stop the bleeding. Oh, one opportunity you get means you feel uh, in housemanship that uh, oh, your hands are uh, very expert hands. So, housemanship, khelte khelte karna. Jab night duty saata hai, you must keep today night I have to finish at least half a dozen CSF lumbar punctures, another half a dozen pleural effusion taps, another three to four thrombolysis, one or two intubations, early morning, eight o'clock ho jayega. Morning ho, eight o'clock, khelte khelte ho jayega. And, uh, kitne milte hai opportunities? Why say, unforgettable evenings to spend, Medicine, surgery, gynops, pediatrics, casualty. 
five postings. So maximum you will get an opportunity of 35 to 40 night duties. Remaining thing is all paid holiday only, no? Housemanship, SPM, dermatology and all that. So even those night duties also we should not cry. Itne duties laga rahe humko. If you go with that uh, learning attitude, killing spirit, you will uh, unknowingly night duty will be over. Huh? And at least you will have a good memory that I have done something with my hands. And the same hands are writing PG entrance. Oh, your hands will start talking in the exam hall. If they are empty, they did not do anything in housemanship means only brain is loaded with too much information. It will struggle to answer. So, sense taken black mode tube. What is a... Uh, uh, true fact about it. The gastric balloon should always be inflated first. <coughs> and uh, then the esophageal balloon. That is a important principle. <coughs> <coughs> now patient is having fever and abdominal pain. And uh, <coughs> in the liver you are finding a space occupying lesion which is so showing a accentuation on a contrast enhancement with contrast enhancement so it is a liver abscess pyogenic liver abscess are generally multiple so it's more likely a amoebic liver abscess so all patients do not require surgical drainage you can still medically manage is what you need to basically remember there is a high grade fever in the patient and uh, his left side what is the spleen spleen is showing spheric abscess so what is the least traumatic but a medically acceptable procedure percutaneous drainage you can do a splenic abscess under the ultrasound guidance is what you need to basically remember now you have been shown a special needle which is used for percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography a needle, a forceps, a suture material, something happens in today's image based entrance. So, what type of needle is used for PTCA? What we use is called Chiba needle. What is Bernice needle? Laparoscopic karte vakat, pneumoperitoneum create karne ke liye, jo needle iste maal karte hai, usko bolte hai, Veris needle. Then, true cut needle is used for Biopsis, it is like a gun. Then you will snatch a little tissue out. It's like a gun. Eh? Then uh, Meghini's needle is for liver biopsy, is what need to be remembered. Now, there are some imaging findings which have been shown. What is this? Pancreas has become annular and uh, it is around the duodenum. Annular pancreas, this is. So, what is not true about it? It is more prevalent in children with Down syndrome. There can be double bubble sign. Anomalies associated with increased risk of pancreatitis. They are all true. And it is due to incomplete rotation of the ventral pancreatic bud. Not because of excessive rotation of the dorsal pancreatic. That is a point you need to appreciate. A 60 year old who has got an obstructive jaundice. <clears throat> what do you see here? Gallbladder is enlarged and there is a mass in the head of the pancreas. So, this is a carcinoma of the head of the pancreas. To do the correct staging, what is most sensitive uh, investigation that you can do? to do the to know the size of the tumor infiltration etc etc ct can show so mri is also good ct can definitely show so ct can very much be used in order to do the staging is what you have to basically remember <clears throat> but if you use ercp or mrcp Magnetic resonance, cholangio, pancreaticography, or endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreaticography. 
at most you can tell that the bile duct is compressed because of that uh, head of the pancreas but you can't tell whether that head of the pancreas has gone to the surrounding tissues or not because in uh, ERCP or MRCP you can't know whether the surrounding tissues infiltration high or high so that is the reason they can diagnose but they can't talk about the receptability of the lesion is what you need to basically remember patient has recurrent episodes of hypoglycemia relieved by taking sugar it's a classical example of samogi symptoms eh? phenomena not phenomena samogi symptoms his imaging is being shown what is it is showing pancreas head may a small lesion it is showing what are the lesions possible in the head of the pancreas insulinoma glucagonoma somatostatinoma etc if glucagonoma is there then what is an important paraneoplastic manifestation of glucagonoma on the skin migratory necrolytic erythema migratory necrolytic erythema is the paraneoplastic manifestation of glucagonoma if it is somatostatinoma or vipoma then what will you get vada watery diarrhea with hypokalemia with eclorohydria the combination vada syndrome you didn't study no problem every year we are teaching the same so authoritatively talking about it first time you are preparing na but by october you should talk like authority with authority at least on all high yielding topics okay doc uh. so that is the point doctor what you have here is insulinoma if a small insulinoma is there what will you do enucleation 1 cm insulinoma is enucleation pluck it out like a you pluck it a mole or a pluck out a pimple you pluck it out and throw that's what you will do on pancreas enucleation so that is the story of images